I'm here with Luke Savant, who is his new Confessions Remixes opus just got dropped on the MRU site at www.madonnaremixesunited.com. Luke Savant, tell me, um, how are you feeling right now about the new project? Relieved. <laughs> I feel I feel relieved that it's out. I've had it's been pretty stressful trying to get it to where it, it is, and I'm very happy with it. Uh, I was working on it from the top of the pandemic, like the day I released um, my Madam X remix album. It was um, pretty much nose to the grindstone getting this out while my regular work in real estate sure. just took off yeah. because yeah. we all got a real job. We all got a real job, and so it's just been really good to have it out. I feel great about it. Um, this is step one of step two, three, <laughs> essentially. Yes. So we're, we're in step one of step three of this entire release process. There's going to be a full mix coming of all of the audio. And then there's going to be um, some videos that are going to be exclusively released on um, uh, MadonnaRemixersUnited.com. Okay. So we're so we looking forward to it. Oh, yeah. So I've been thinking about you and your relationship with them. Are you a lot? recently and um, but also a little bit about you i want to learn a bit about you and so let's go back in time what is your first memory or experience this will be a fun question what are your first memory or experience about something madonna related can can i ask that kind of a question <laughs> absolutely me? i think those are fun because you know i i don't think it's exclusive to me i think that a lot of um people my age uh, as my age is ambiguous <laughs> um i think a lot of people my age have similar things you know i one of my first things I remember um, is listening to my my forty five of of the Like a Virgin album, and it was it was just fantastic hearing that on um, this elementary classroom uh, record player that had a speaker attached to it, and you had to use the the little yellow insert to to make it play on your record player and, and booming that in my room, which when I say booming, I mean, like it's basically treble. Um, and, <laughs> and, and just having a good time. I, I remember sitting in front of the TV glued to watching the Material Girl video and, mm -hmm. and you know, li later learning, oh, this is a, a remake of Diamonds Are Girls Best Friend. So those are my some of my earliest memories, you know. But it was just it was all about the visual and watching videos of Lucky right. Star and Burning Up and and all of those things in the beginning and in, in the early days. It was just it was a great time. I, I understand. I understand. Yeah, we maybe have a similar age. <laughs> maybe. <laughs> so what, is, what was your <laughs> what was your first Madonna? purchase or music that you actually owned like 45 was it was it material girl it was like a virgin and mm -hmm. i didn't buy it my older brother bought it for me because oh, okay. i i well and the weirdest thing is and i always tease my dad about this because my dad my dad bought me one of my very first 45s and i think i was six or seven and it was a Marvin Gaye song, but it was sexual healing. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> and I tease him about that. I'm like, Dad, what were you doing buying that for a six-year-old? And, you know, hey. You probably I, wanted it. <laughs> well, I love the song. I, I actually love the Freemasons remix of it. Actually, it's fantastic. Oh, yeah, um, right. yeah, but um, my, my older brother and my dad, I think, were at Tower Records, at the very first Tower Records. I grew up in the town where that started in Sacramento, California. And um, that's where uh, they were. And I ended up having a Madonna album brought home for me, a record, a single. Nice. So those are that, that was what I own. And then I had to go actually and dub from a neighbor's on my tape deck, the first album and Like a Virgin, which took a few months for them to actually give permission because that was coveted like gold at the time. Right. <laughs> and uh, so, yeah, I was able to, to listen to those. Those are my first possessions. And, and I played those things out like crazy. Yes. Right. Me too. Me too. So think about your music and your process for remixing. What, what are the ingredients that go into making a remix of Luke's, Luke Savant remix? What's the process for you? Mm, the ingredients have changed. <laughs> they've, okay. cha they've changed over time. So ultimately, the way I it kind of started out is somewhat now how things are getting back towards, which is a really good full circle moment. But 
Uh, I mean, ultimately, I need to find something that is a very, it's very Madonna-esque. Like, yeah. um, there was a time maybe about 10 years ago where I, and my, I've been doing this since for 20 years. So mm-hmm. about 10 years ago, I was doing a lot more deviation where I'm, I'm remixing things that probably wouldn't be something Madonna would do or consider, or it was just a different sound. And I don't, I never felt it aged well. It didn't, it didn't land well or, or sit well in time. And I've kind of gotten away from that. So now if you were, if I were to remix now, which I am, of course, I'm not putting anything out that if I don't want to pick this up five years from now and take a listen to it or 10 years from now and listen to it and go, damn, that was pretty fun. Then I, I don't remix it. So um, that's kind of what are the new ingredients is okay. it has to last. It has to be a Madonna remix. It has to be Madonna involved in it. If I'm going to do a Madonna mix. Of course. And that's kind of my, my thing. Interesting. Interesting. Um, you know, a good, my opinion, a good remix, last or stands the test of time no matter how old it is well right like i would want to say one of the golden ages of madonna's remixes were from ray of light with victor calderon oh you know, yeah you, you being in the dance floor with him touching beautiful stranger frozen, frozen. the the club 69 remixes of uh nothing, nothing really matters. matters oh my god i mean and you could pick those remixes up today and go damn that was so good like, yeah, right, right. good god that was great and that's the whole idea and the concept i if, if I'm going to remix something, I have to be able to want to listen to it later. Otherwise, yeah. I don't want to bore somebody else. <laughs> yeah. Very interesting. Um, speaking of your remixes, again, can you share some examples of what, what is an essential Luke Savant remix or examples of yours that you think are essential that people should be listening to over, over all, the, all the many that you've done over the years? Mm. Well, is that a possible to do? <laughs> no, there's there's a lot, um, uh, you know, and I think that I I've shared maybe some conversations with you before, but I I have um, uh, my very very first Heartbreak City remix that I did off of Rebel Heart. Uh, I think you might have included it in one of your earlier podcasts. It is just that something that for me is very quintessential. Uh, me, I feel good about it every time I hear it. It's you know eight years, eight years, seven years old. It's about seven years old. Um, I'm gonna listen to it whenever it comes on. I love it. Um, it's just it's. I'd probably say something that would be more mid tempo groove is something that's far more approachable on a long term basis for me to be able to remix and feel good about it. Good, good. Yes, I do remember that one. It's a good one. Um, you don't mind? I'd like. To- Switch, switch a little bit here to the questions around uh, to another topic, but related about MRU or Madonna Remixes United. And I'm curious about how I still consider myself a newbie in terms of being part of the group. Although I've been watching you all for some time, I always wanted to, I've always wondered like behind the scenes, how does, how do the, how do the remixers support each other, particularly the sort of up and coming folks that might be kind of new to it? Say that one more time so I understand exactly what you're asking. What, how, how about sort of about part, part of the, the workings of MRU? I'm interested to hear, like, uh, how does, how do, like, say maybe a, a more seasoned remixer such as yourself, like, or, or, or other remixers, how do you support each other? Hmm. Well, one of the things that I find happens daily, weekly, monthly is I, I get, because of what I've grown. Mm -hmm. Um, I wouldn't say I've necessarily started it, but I would say I've grown it. But what Mm -hmm. I've grown, I end up getting emailed or message with remixes constantly. Oh, check this out. Or can you post my mix and can you, uh, or Mm -hmm. share my mix. And, Mm -hmm. you know, often I tend to support, I would say support. I tend to actually still engage with the remixers that I've always engaged with, or if there's somebody that I stumble across that where your sound is just so fucking awesome. Mm-hmm. I hope I can cuss on your it's a podcast. No, yes, okay, Fuck, of course you can. Great. <laughs> so if if there's somebody that I can that I've heard that I haven't interacted with, like I'll give you a prime example, uh, nephew. I I've always mm-hmm. seen 
him around online, seen his mm -hmm. remixes. Um, we were getting ready to do um, Raison d'Etre uh, remix project. And that was something that Roman and Mary were helming. And I, I came across this remix of um, Extreme Oxide. And right, yes, it was yes. just like, yes. why isn't this guy working with Absolutely. us? Why aren't we helping to promote this person? And it's not like he's new, he's been around for a while. So it it's one of the and then I personally reached out and I'm like, okay, we're gonna we're gonna do something here. And usually there's a positive response. And so when we grow, we tend to grow that way. Um, we used to do these cattle calls where we would post, hey, we're doing this. And if you want to be part of that, send in your remix. That was many, many years ago. And sometimes you end up getting, you know, out of 10, you might have two. Yeah. That you'd right. go, yeah, we're going to work on this. But end up, what we actually end up doing in terms of support is working with the remixer. Because yeah, you'd be surprised. You'd be surprised how long, I mean, how often uh, we'd get a mix from somebody that we really want to work with. And we're like, you know, if we put your mix next to everybody else's, you're, you're going to fall through the cracks. Yeah. So we want to help beef up your mix. We want to give you some pointers, some tips. We want to help you get to the point okay. where your mix is going to elevate and share a sound a quality with the others that are already going to be on the project. Yeah. And so we tend to promote and support the remixers in that sense. And then over time, they organically just tend to get a little bit better. But we do definitely focus on, there's a, there has been some teaching aspect in terms of yeah. sound okay. or what needs to happen in order to kind of bring everybody to a level I where on a continuous mm -hmm. project, they're, they're listening to something that's all quality. That's what I was, what I was trying to get to. And what I'm, that's, what I, that's very good to hear. I suspected you would say that. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so that's good to hear. And, and there's the downside to that. And I'll be honest, it's not always the happiest thing to say or to hear for other people, but sometimes we've had to say no. Yeah. And no is not a bad thing for, or forever. It just means you're not right for what we're doing at the moment. Yeah. Feedback's important. People need to know that. Yeah. So that is a real thing too. So thanks for sharing that. I'm, you know, I'm interested in hearing about the, the, the inner workings of the, of the group, but I think people are too. On the same vein, let's talk about sort of the leadership of MRU. And this may be an odd question, although I don't, I don't think it should be. But as a leader of MRU, which I think of you as, I am, and you should, <laughs> um, what do you need from us? Or if that's not a good question. I need your complete, answer. complete subjugation. <laughs> It should be obvious, right? I need everybody to listen to what I say and do what I say. That's it. Do it now! <laughs> no, okay. I don't think that's really what you were asking me. No, I'm not. <laughs> I mean, when, when you're in a leadership role, sometimes, you, you know, you feel, you can feel, you know, it's, it can be challenging. I don't think people realize that. If there was something that you need from people what would it be what, what does what does luke savant need to be uh, a better to be better part of 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 to help the, everything go or i don't know i mean it's an open-ended question i'm not, i have no idea i'm no i'm not going to trying to get anything i have no idea honestly i i think what i I've, I've needed and i've been switching to this over the last few years is collaboration mm -hmm. so one of the last remix projects we put out um in the middle of the pandemic was a, a ballad project or it was a much slower group and that was called lonely hunter which was um you know really particularly special for me um and one of the things that was different uh was it was it wasn't just my team and i putting something together it was the remixers all collaborating together in terms of how it should happen very much like a consortium of ideas and we we have all kind of came together and and it was a a lot of cooks in the kitchen um and there were more fights during that i'd say that needed to happen um yeah. not with the remixers oddly <laughs> but um but ultimately it, it became a, a really good process and uh and what came out of that was mm -hmm. 
a much better understanding of and respect for each other's work. So what I've, need, what I've needed was um, kind of that ongoing collaboration and that stuck. And so those remixers that um, were part of that process have, they're, they're always able to post and do things, you know, they're part of the team. Um, they tend to have a, a lot more autonomy and that's, mm -hmm. that's fine. That's great. So once, once we tend to add our remixers on um, in a general sense and they get access, they, they post on the site, they can post the remixes, they can do what they'd like to do, they can share, they can, it, it's, it, it, there's a trust level that's already built in, so yeah. they, mm -hmm. they go and do their thing, and that way it doesn't always have to be so top down, it's actually a little bit more of a, of a democratic environment, and, and yeah. we all talk about things, yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's inevitable that when you get a bunch of people, in the, uh, in, like you said, cooks in the kitchen. Sometimes you, people rub, the, rub each other, but, you know, you grow together at the same time. Sure. Um, I've spent a lot of time with you already, um, but also I have one more question. Uh, okay. What are your hopes? What are your hopes for the future of Madonna Remixers United? Well, there's a few things that we're, we're considering doing, and, and um, I'm, I'm not sure if I should... Well, we're considering launching something that was around in the past. Okay. And um, I, I'm not necessarily going to give it away, but okay. we're thinking of, uh, we're always thinking of what can we do next and what, how can we expand? Oh, come on, tell us. <laughs> <laughs> well, there, we're considering doing a forum. Um, it's a lot of work. Uh, we're going to see what happens with that. Um, th we're, that's one aspect. We are looking at some uh, merchandising options that we're considering. I've been wondering about that too. Yes. Yeah. Now we're, we're limited of course, because um, I, I, as our, our remixes are not for sale um, and neither are, is anything that is, that has Madonna's image is not for sale. Yeah, of course not. However, we are essentially marketing each other. We are marketing us. So there, we're looking into um, branded merchandise material for the remixers. Oh, good. And um, uh, a way that we can brand MRU in a way that allows us to not infringe upon Madonna's rights. Yes, of course. So yeah, we've been, we've been, yeah, we've been, we've been <laughs> considering that. And that's, that's something we're working on this year. Cool, cool. That's interesting. Very interesting. Thank you for that. Yeah. So everybody, Luke Savant, you can get his new 19 remix, I call it Opus, uh, Confessions on the Dance Floor. It's available right now at www.madonnaremixersunited.com. And Luke Savant, thank you for your time. Appreciate it.